Did you know that, according to science, life on Earth does not even have a single billion years left to live? But what will be the ultimate cause for the end of life on Earth? An asteroid impact? A nuclear war? Or maybe a massive natural disaster? Yes, any of these could wipe out a large portion of life on our planet. But here is the thing. They are all just possibilities. They may happen or they may not. And even if they do, life might recover. But there is one ending that is not just possible. It is guaranteed. We know that almost every form of energy on Earth, except for nuclear energy, comes from the sun. Every plant, every animal, every breath we take is powered, directly or indirectly, by sunlight. So it is simple. Life on Earth can only exist as long as the sun continues to shine. Now, you might think everything is safe for a very long time. After all, experts estimate that the sun still has about 8 to 10 billion years left before it runs out of fuel. But here is the twist. Long before that, around 5 billion years from now, the sun will expand into a red giant. And when it does, it might grow so large that it engulfs the earth. Sounds like we are still safe for another 5 billion years, right? No, life on earth does not have even a single billion years to live. The truth is, every single living thing on earth will have vanished long before the sun becomes a red giant. In fact, compared to how long life has already existed on earth, the time we have left is shockingly short. But what exactly is going to guarantee the death of all life on earth so early? That is what we are going to explore in this video. Hi friends, welcome to a new episode of Science Simplified for All. Every star has a region around it called the habitable zone. This is the area where temperatures are just right for life to potentially exist, neither too hot nor too cold. In simple terms, it is the region where liquid water can exist on a planet's surface. If a planet is too close to its star, inside the inner edge of the habitable zone, the heat will be too intense. Any water on such a planet would evaporate completely and remain only as vapor. On the other hand, if a planet is too far away, outside the outer edge of the habitable zone, it would be extremely cold. Water would remain frozen as ice and life as we know it would struggle to survive. This just right region where conditions are suitable for life, is also known as the Goldilocks Zone. Now let us look at the habitable zone of our own sun. Scientists have proposed various estimates because it is not just the sun's heat that matters. The structure of a planet's atmosphere, the presence of an ozone layer, greenhouse gases and several other factors are also considered while calculating the exact boundaries of the habitable zone. However, Based on average estimates, the Sun's habitable zone currently stretches roughly from the orbit of Venus to the orbit of Mars. Venus lies near the inner edge, Mars near the outer edge, and Earth is comfortably located right in between, well within this zone. But here is an important point. A star's habitable zone does not remain in the same position forever. As a star ages, its energy output slowly changes. As a result, the habitable zone gradually shifts outward. When our solar system first formed, the Sun's habitable zone was much closer to the Sun than it is today. Back then, Earth was right at the outer edge of the zone. Venus was clearly inside it and Mars was far outside. Over billions of years, as the Sun's output increased, the habitable zone slowly expanded outward. That is why today, Earth lies well within it. Venus is now right at the inner edge and Mars has reached the outer edge. This outward movement of the habitable zone continues for all stars as they age. And eventually, planets that were once perfectly placed, like Earth, will move out of it. Our Sun is an average star, what astronomers call a medium-mass star. Stars like this typically have a lifespan of around 12 to 15 billion years. The Sun formed about 4.5 billion years ago, which means it still has around 8 to 10 billion years of life left. Like all stars, the Sun's primary energy source is nuclear fusion, a process where hydrogen nuclei combine to form helium, releasing massive amounts of energy. But nuclear fusion is not happening throughout the entire Sun. 
It requires extremely high temperatures and pressure, conditions that are found only in the Sun's core. Although the Sun's total diameter is about 1.4 million kilometers, the fusion reactions occur only in the central core, which is about 300,000 to 350,000 kilometers in diameter. So, all the energy that powers the Sun, and by extension, life on Earth, comes from this relatively small region deep inside. However, the rate of fusion inside the core does not remain constant throughout a star's lifetime. As hydrogen is fused into helium, the resulting helium, being denser, sinks toward the center of the core. Since helium occupies less space than hydrogen, the core starts to shrink. As the core contracts, the pressure and temperature inside increase. There are two main reasons for this rise in temperature and pressure. First, as the core shrinks, more mass is concentrated into a smaller volume. This increases the gravitational pressure. Second, the surface area of the shrinking core becomes smaller, which reduces the rate at which heat escapes. As a result, the temperature inside rises even further. As both pressure and temperature increase, fusion reactions in the core accelerate. The sun begins to produce more and more energy. This is why, as stars age, they emit more energy over time. In fact, the sun was emitting 30% less energy when it first formed compared to what it emits today. Over the past 4.5 billion years, its energy output has steadily increased. Currently, the sun's brightness is increasing by about 1% every 100 million years, and this rate is expected to continue rising. As the sun gets hotter, its habitable zone, the region around it where temperatures allow liquid water to exist, shifts farther outward. This explains why, when the solar system first formed, Earth was near the outer edge of the sun's habitable zone. Venus was inside the zone, and Mars was outside. But over billions of years, as the sun's output increased, the habitable zone moved outward. Today, Earth lies comfortably within the middle of this zone, while Venus is now near the inner edge, and Mars has just entered the outer boundary. But the Sun will keep getting hotter, and the habitable zone will continue shifting outward. Eventually, it will move beyond Earth's orbit. At that point, Earth will no longer lie within the Sun's habitable zone. The amount and intensity of sunlight reaching Earth will rise sharply, causing global temperatures to soar far beyond what life can tolerate. As the sun's heat continues to increase, all the oceans, lakes and rivers on Earth will eventually dry up. The planet will transform into a lifeless desert. With no surface water left, almost all known life forms will go extinct. For a while, some life may still survive by relying on underground water reserves. Subterranean aquifers deep beneath the surface will continue to provide limited support to certain organisms. But that too will not last forever. As global temperatures rise further, even underground water sources will evaporate or become inaccessible. And with that, the last traces of life on Earth will vanish. As Earth heats up and water turns into vapor, it will rise into the atmosphere and accumulate as vapor. But in the upper layers of the atmosphere, a subtle but destructive process begins. High-energy radiation from the sun will break apart some of the water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen atoms, a process known as photodissociation. The lighter hydrogen atoms will then escape into space, permanently lost to the vacuum. This process is already happening today but at a very slow rate. However, as more sunlight hits the Earth, this reaction will accelerate. And once all surface water has evaporated into the atmosphere, the hydrogen loss will speed up dramatically. Eventually, all the hydrogen from Earth's water will escape into space, making it impossible for water to ever reform on the planet again. From that point forward, Earth will be a permanently dry, lifeless world. And here is the shocking part. This entire transformation from a life-sustaining planet to a barren desert will not take billions of years. Scientists estimate that this could happen in just one billion years from now. But even before that, there is another problem. As global temperatures rise, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will begin to drop. This may sound surprising, because we often associate carbon dioxide with warming due to the greenhouse effect. But this process is different. Normally, 
When carbon dioxide increases, the greenhouse effect intensifies, trapping more heat. But if the heat exceeds a certain threshold, silicate rocks on the Earth's surface start absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. As the temperature rises further, this absorption increases. Over time, the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere will fall drastically. And this will have devastating consequences. Without enough carbon dioxide, plants can no longer perform photosynthesis. That means they cannot produce food and they cannot release oxygen into the air. As a result, all animals and organisms which directly or indirectly depend on plants for food will start to die out. Oxygen levels in the atmosphere will also decline, making survival impossible even for species that do not rely on food chains. In short, the collapse of photosynthesis will lead to a complete ecological breakdown. And this event is expected to occur within just 600 million years from now, well before the oceans dry up. Think about it for a moment. Life has existed on Earth for around 3.5 billion years. But from now on, we may have less than a billion years left. In fact, within just 600 million years, most animal species on Earth will begin to go extinct. Ironically, the mammals, life forms that evolved most recently, are likely to disappear first. They will be followed by reptiles, then fish, and gradually, one by one, the rest of the animal kingdom will vanish. The only survivors, for a while, will be single-celled organisms like bacteria. Since they do not depend on photosynthesis for survival, they may endure a bit longer. But once all water on Earth is gone, even they will not survive. In the end, the very first life forms to appear on Earth will also be the last to disappear. Now, here is a small ray of hope. By that time, Mars will have moved into the Sun's habitable zone. The surface temperature there may finally become suitable for liquid water to exist. But Mars still has a major problem. Its atmosphere is extremely thin and cannot support life as we know it. However, 600 million years is still a long time. If humanity continues to advance, we may eventually terraform Mars, make it suitable for human habitation. It is even possible that by then, humans would have migrated to Mars and made it their new home. And let us not forget how fast science can progress. It is nearly impossible to imagine what technological breakthroughs humanity might achieve in the coming hundreds of millions of years. Who knows? Perhaps we may one day develop the technology to shield Earth from the excess heat of the sun. A large-scale artificial shield could reflect or block a portion of the sun's radiation. This could extend the lifespan of life on Earth. Better yet, if such a shield could also be used to capture and convert solar energy for our needs, it would be an incredible source of power, both protective and productive. One thing is certain, the exploration of Mars must continue because one day it might just become our second home. Even though Earth may not last forever, our journey does not have to end here. With science as our guide and imagination as our fuel, humanity might just find a way to survive, even beyond Earth. If you found this video thought-provoking, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. And tell us in the comments, where do you think humanity's future lies? Thank you.